Hey, what's up, YouTube? My name is Brett Westwood, and today we are going to go over Shad CN UI, and I'm gonna show you guys how to use the drop down component and avatar component to make a very cool looking navigation component that looks exactly like this. So you're gonna be able to click your avatar and the drop down menu is gonna appear. You see this on a lot of different applications, and I know you're gonna to wanna to use it in your project. So let's go back over to the documentation of Shad CN UI, and they consider themselves not a component library. And the reason why is if you look inside the documentation, it is a collection of reusable components that you could just copy and paste into your app. So this was very simple and quick for me to actually implement into that project, and it was no hassle to do as well, and I'm gonna show you how to do that. And also these components are built using Radex UI and Tailwind CSS. So like I said, you don't have to install any packages or dependencies. You could get up and going by just copying and pasting the code. And I'm gonna show you exactly how to do what I made. So before we get started, if you can hit that like button and also subscribe for more content just like this, that would be greatly appreciated. But other than that, let's get to coding. Inside of the docs, you can see there's an installation section. We're gonna click on that. And we are gonna use Next.js, but you can see all the other frameworks it does support. So when you click on Next.js, it's gonna give you a few steps to get up and running. So you can already have an existing Next.js project, so that means you're gonna skip step one. I'm gonna do step one real quick just to show you how it's done. You could copy this. I'm using the Node Package Manager. I'm gonna open up my terminal. We're gonna change directories into where I keep all of my code. And then what we're gonna do here is we're gonna paste that line of code in step one and is creating an application called my app with TypeScript, Tailwind, and ESLint. We're gonna press enter. It's gonna to prompt to a few questions. We're gonna say no to the source directory, yes to the app router, and no to change in the import alias. Now it's gonna initialize the project and install all of the dependencies required. And like I said, if you already have an existing project, you will skip this step because you can still use ShadCN inside of your existing project. So we're gonna cd into the project and I'm gonna type code dot to get into my VS Code Editor. What we're gonna do here is I have my code editor on a different screen. I'm gonna close the terminal and we're gonna look at step two. So step two is you could run the CLI. There is two ways you could do this. You technically do not have to run the CLI. And the reason is because you can actually do it manually and just copy and paste the code. But this way is a lot quicker, so why not do it? So we're gonna copy this command for running the CLI. We are going to bring my VS Code editor here, make it full screen. I'll zoom in real quick. We're gonna open up the terminal, paste the command line, and then run the CLI. So it's gonna start prompting a few questions. You could either choose TypeScript or not here. I said yes to TypeScript. You could choose the style. I'm just gonna keep it default. Which color would you like the base color? I'm gonna keep it as slate. Where is your global CSS file? It, if you're using the framework, it just automatically does this, so you can press enter. Would you like to use CSS variables? I'm gonna say no, because we're gonna use Tailwind. So where is your Tailwind config file? It's in there and this says config the import alias for components. It's gonna create a components for you, folder for you. It's also gonna create a lib folder for you with the utils file. And then we are using the React server components, so yes. And then write the configuration to components.json. You can just press yes. And then it's gonna initialize the project, install all the dependencies, and get everything set up for you. And then as you see in the code, we have components folder, a lib folder, a brand new app directory, we have our Tailwind file, we have components.json file, um, everything ready for you to get up and running. So now that the CLI is successfully installed onto your application, these were the questions they asked in step three. And then step four of the installation inside the docs shows the pretty much the structure of how your folder should be. So inside the components folder, you should have another folder called UI and that is where we're gonna have our dropdown and our avatar component. And I'm gonna show you exactly how we could do this. 
And then depending on which component you want, so for this example, if you want to add the button component, you run the command npx shadcn ui at latest add button. And then we'll add the button and then you just have to import it to whatever file you want. And then you will be able to use that button inside of that file. So like I said, let's go and create this UI folder real quick and I'm gonna show you the lib folder. So inside the lib folder, we have the utils. The utils already has the Tailwind merge, which allows us to use Tailwind merge so we can use CSS classes and Tailwind CSS inside of the same element. And then if we go into the components, it just created the folder. So we had to create the UI folder in there. And then this is where we're gonna add all of the code when we actually run the CLIs for the specific components. The first component we are going to work with is the drop-down menu. If you go down and you look at the components, you can see exactly how they look. They give you a preview and they give you the code. So they have an installation. Like I said, you can either do the CLI or manual. So if you didn't already install the CLI like we just did in the prior step, then you must do manual and you just got to expand this, copy all the code and then paste it in and then you should be good to go and just make sure you install this right here. That's if you're doing manually. Since we're using the CLI, all we have to do is copy this command right here, npm. We'll go back to our VS code. And this is going to add the drop down menu inside of the components UI. So as you can see here, it's creating it right there inside of the components dash UI. And it creates all of this file right here. So this is a plug and play. You don't have to worry about really any of this code in here. This is just the code that allows us to use the drop down menu inside of a different file. And the file we're going to use it in is inside the nav bar. And if I go back to the code, you can see now that if you scroll down the usage, this shows you how to use it. So you must import all of this code at the top of your file. And then this is the code on how to actually use it down here. So I'll explain that real quick when I show you the code. So since I have the code already done inside of that project, there's no reason for me to recode this and make this video longer than what it should be. So I'm inside of my stalker project that I'm working on. And inside of this, we're inside of the navbar.jsx. It could be TSX. This is a navbar component. And as you can see here, we're going to go to the top real quick. And after you have inside of your components forward slash UI, you have that drop down like here. You All you have to do is import the drop down now at the top of whatever page you want to use. So inside the nav bar on lines 12 through 17, we are importing the drop down menu, the menu content, the menu item, and the menu trigger. They also have different things you can import inside of here. You can check the docs for that, but these are the ones we're going to use. So if we scroll down, I am using all of my imports down here. So you must wrap everything in a drop down menu. Then we have the drop down menu trigger. This is going to be what you're clicking to actually trigger the drop down menu. And like I said, if you look inside of the docs, let me pull them up real quick. It is literally telling you the order of how you should place them. So these docs are very simple and implementing this should be very easy. So the drop down menu trigger actually allows you to trigger the drop down and inside of this I have the avatar. So you can install the CLI for the avatar as well. So whenever you click the avatar, this is going to trigger the drop down menu. And how I display my Gmail account is by using next auth. And as you see there, I'm using the session from the user image, but that's not important in this video. But if you do want to learn about next auth and how to implement it in your project, I do have uh, about four videos on my channel about that. I will link them at the top here. So all you have to do is click it, learn about next auth and how you can implement that profile image. But right below the drop down menu trigger, we have the drop down menu content. So this is going to be the content of the drop down con menu. And then inside of the content, we have different drop down menu items. So I have about four of them down here. And then I have a link tag inside of there because whatever drop down menu item I click, I want to link it to a different page. And that link component is coming from Next.js 13. 
But other than that, it is very simple to implement this drop down menu. Let me show you real quick the avatar. And the same thing with the avatar, it's the same process. You import the avatar at the top from the components folder. And it's like this with the avatar and this, all of this code in the avatar, you do not have to know. And you get the code from the avatar by going to avatar, you go to the installation, install the CLI, and then wherever you wanna use the avatar, you look at the usage and then you can use it at the top of any file you want. It's coming from the components slash UI slash avatar, and then use the avatar like this with the image and then the fallback. And the fallback is just in case your image doesn't load, what is it gonna show? So let's just go over this real quick. This is the project. I click it. That's the drop down menu trigger right here, the avatar. This is the drop down menu content, all of this. And these are the drop down menu items here that I could click. And I just want to show you one more thing. If you do go back inside of the code, inside of the navbar file like this, and you scroll down, you can actually use Tailwind CSS to edit some of the content for the drop down menu. So the drop down menu content, I added a class name with the margin top of four to give it more margin on the top. I also wanted some more margin on the right of one. I had a background of white for the content. You can put the background wherever you want. So if I change this to black, go back to the code. As you can see, the content is black now. I mean, it is very easy to customize, very simple to use, and I highly, highly, highly recommend ShadCN UI inside of your projects. But I'm gonna move this back to white, and you could customize all of this code you want. But like I said, very simple to use, and if you do have any questions, you can leave them down in the comments below, and I'll get back to you soon. I'll link the docs to ShadCN UI, and also, they do have some examples up here where you could check out the examples and see how they do their code and everything as well. So I hope you learned something from this video. If you have, hit that like button and also subscribe for more content just like this.